Hey, Tommy. Good to, hey, good to see you too. You aren't kidding. Corner Draft House. It Corner all makes sense. House. I know. And great <laughs> menu. Great Bloody Marys. Let's go check it out. All right. Let's see. Uh, Well, Mike, we're happy to be here. I'm happy to be introduced to your favorite pub. Definitely it is. You know, I used to office not too far from here, sold in this building. This is a great area. We're right next to Balboa Park and all the activities in Bankers Hill. And it's not every day we get to meet one of the owners, right? Managing uh, partners? That's yeah. right. This yeah. is my buddy, Dave Creviston. Yep. And he's been kind enough to open up his doors for us today. Absolutely. Thanks for having us. So how did you get Great started you guys here. here? Is this your first restaurant business? Uh, third one for me. I, first one in Bankers Hill, north of downtown. Was in PB for years and then up in North County as well. We have a sister restaurant called Beer Garden of Encinitas. So yeah, we're excited to be here. We're coming up on our three year anniversary and we've been really excited to be a part of the community here and all the new development. And you know, I think we think it's one of the best neighborhoods sprouting up as Mike knows in, in Bankers Hill. So. Yeah. Mike was saying he does a lot of business here and watched it grow and develop within Baker's Hill. Yeah, I mean, just the last five to ten years, you've really seen it blossom. And um, so many, you can just look around and see so many great, you know, luxury high rises coming up, which we've never had here, yeah. not only in San Diego, but especially in Baker's Hill. Although Baker's Hill was initially named Baker's Hill because it was an area of affluence many, many years ago when the city got started. So did that have an influence on how you designed Draft House and how it was created? You know, absolutely. We always like to touch the community a little bit when we're designing any of the restaurants that I've been a part of. And Balboa Park being such a rich, you know, affluent history. Um, we have, you know, in the bathrooms and along on the walls, we've got a lot of nice portraits and memorials and, and things that really go with the neighborhood and the community. But yeah, Balboa Park has definitely influenced and the zoo and the area and, you know, just all the all sure, the beautiful areas in the neighborhood, yeah. <laughs> when you're designing it, you're looking through a lot of things and try to find what fits, but yeah. Community plays a big role. What would you say was your number one goal when creating Draft House? What did you want to bring to the people? Just a local, really great spot where you could sit down at the bar and feel comfortable with whoever you came in with, as well as meet new people. Uh, it's a place where you, you know your bartender and they know your drink, and uh, or what type of food you like, and you're also easily you know, meeting someone new or someone visiting. You know, we're so close to the airport. Yeah, I guess that's, you know, bringing people together. I know, love it. In, I know in a great neighborhood setting. Yeah. Everybody knows your name here. <laughs> yeah. The mugs, you got your name in a mug, right? Yeah, it's yeah a, what's with the mugs? Well, that's a big thing people, you know, like to have. We have a list normally waiting for people to get, get a mug, but basically you have your own mug when you come in. We're that kind of a local neighborhood spot where you can come in and the bartender knows norm which number your, your mug normally is and you get a free beer on your birthday. And, as well as a 10% discount um, awesome. when you have your own mug. So <laughs> is it a people, club? Yeah, absolutely it is, okay. yeah. Yeah, you get a one-year membership. This club. You get a one-year membership, and there's ways to get your name on a plaque on the bar as well, and we do a lot of fun things like that. So It really is, like you said, it is the cheers almost yeah. of Bankers Hill. Norm comes in every once in a while, <laughs> hangs out with Flip Play, but he does. We have all types. Right, all and types I'm sure Mike can attest to this. Right. I feel like they needed something like this here in Bankers Hill. Yeah, you know, it's a very, um, a lot of higher end restaurants here and uh, you know you got Mr. A's right across the street, wonderful spot, but this is a real um, people's kind of place where you can just nuzzle up and watch sports and the menu is fantastic by the way, it's Thank a you. wonderful menu. To everybody that comes in and I think you know Mike can attest or anybody that's ate here the food is exactly that, it's Phenomenal. very fresh and very good. This yeah. Bloody Mary has its, its huge reputation. Oh yeah, too. five different types of them, you bet. <laughs> Yeah, we infuse bacon and cheddar in some of our vodkas. And well, we have what's called a, uh, a secret, a yeah. secret Bloody Mary. Uh, that's probably secret. what they say. Everything's a yeah. secret. Oh. You know, <laughs> nah. But no, they, they, they definitely come out with some specials on the weekend that are, you know, they're trying to have a little fun with it and get a little creative. Everything from chicken wings to shrimp to beef sticks. So, yeah. Right? Everybody loves that. Yeah. Why not? Especially when you're watching football on Sunday or you just want to sit out on a dog-friendly patio with your pooch. and. You know, we have two nice sidewalk cafes in the back patio back there, so even a dog menu now. So. Dog friendly? Yeah. Dog absolutely. friendly. Wow. Yeah. That's well, big in this neighborhood as well. A lot of we people have a like dog with a big reputation who yeah. follows this man I around know. over here. <laughs> She's very demanding though, so yeah. I don't know. Yeah, Is that no. dog menu high a lot end? Of, a lot of dogs are, yeah. absolutely. Oh, you get Sam and you get the, the best of everything. Oh, so it's yeah, so imperfect. <laughs> yes. Yep. In her own bowl. Oh, perfect. So three years here, 
What are the plans for the future? Where do you see yourself? Uh, right now, you know, um, waiting and seeing what comes. Um, I think in the next year or so, you never know, another combination with um, a current business partner or maybe somebody else in the future. I always like to not plan too far ahead and see where it takes you. So. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, congratulations. Thanks for having us here. Yeah, thank you very much. Thanks for you guys coming in. Hopefully we can enjoy something after the interview here. So. Actually, uh, when I mentioned that we were coming here for lunch, my wife heard alcohol and she hopped in her car and just <laughs> got the dog and she's here with us. So she, I think she's going to... She's like a very I smart think, and lovely woman. I see Who, drove <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Who drove the dog, yeah. Amy? Yeah, yeah that's true. Well, the Who dog will probably drive home. Yeah. Okay, there you go. <laughs>business but I like to pretend I'm a surfer. <laughs> I wish I would be as good surfing as riding. That would be very fun. But yes, I'm in the horse business. <laughs> yes, you've been to the Olympics a number of times, am I right? Yes, three times. Three mm -hmm. times. So you know a thing or two. So tell me about how you got involved in tonight's event. Um, in tonight's event, it's a fundraiser obviously for the USET. The USET is supporting the teams which go to Olympics, go to Pan American Games and other championships. And as you know, as a rider, you don't just travel as a rider, you travel with your horse and equipment and it becomes quite costly. So that's why we have to put on fundraisers and support our USET and uh, make sure they can help us achieve all those goals. The live auction is about to get underway, so there's yes. some world-class um, really unique gifts that are being auctioned off this evening. Many of them are Olympians that you can never like purchase a day with them. Like ladies of dressage, like Gunter's doing one where he is getting auctioned as a 
surfer a day with with our really good friend and competitor that's international, um, David Blake. It's, it would be fun and I think it's fun to auction off those kind of things because you end up making friends and you get to know people and someone might get even more involved in the sport because of something like that. But that's why it makes sense to do something like that. It seems like a real community that's involved here. It is. I mean, most of the people you... We have a big horse show going on right now in Del Mar at the fairgrounds and I would say 80% of the people you will see there during the day being involved somehow in the in the show. What drew you to the sport originally? I grew up on a farm and ride, riding ponies and then it just grew from there. It just kind of evolved. It wasn't really a set out plan for me to go to the Olympics, but I ended up just doing one step at a time and that's how it evolved. So it kind of comes full circle. You yeah. started as a young one riding and now you're out here both supporting young riders all the way up to expert level riders. Yeah, it's for all the way across. Uh -huh. That's amazing. So what kind of things can I bid on tonight? I'm, I'm looking around. I'm looking for my next auction item. Well, I think you should bid on a surfing lesson. I can't well, swim that well. That's okay. <laughs> I'll, I'll strap you onto the board and <laughs> carry you out there. <laughs> well, perfect. Well, thank you so much for telling me all about this wonderful event and how it's benefiting such a wonderful cause. Yeah, thanks thank for you. being part of it. Great. program and how you got involved in such a fabulous event? Well, we got involved in such a fabulous event to support our sport of dressage and our future Olympians and our up and coming Olympics next year in Tokyo. Uh, we run a program with young horses up to Grand Prix horses very close by to this beautiful facility in uh, Rancho Santa Fe and um, we hope to help as much as we possibly can get our elite athletes off to the Olympics. Their group was like our big, one of our biggest sponsors for this evening, and because they just love like the future and what it, what it carries forward and what it brings. So it's very, very important that we all come together and help as much as we can. And it takes a lot to get there because there's all these clinics and training that happened for many, many years before anything ever happens. So it's Absolutely. a really collective effort. Absolutely, it has to be a collective effort. It can't be on the shoulders of a small handful of sponsors. Everyone as a country has to come together, especially because our country is so large and really help in that effort. It's unbelievable because it's the first time we've done this on this coast for many, many years. Mm -hmm. And we were hoping maybe for 120, 150 people. And we have about 250 people. And we were super lucky because we had a lot of people underwrite stuff. And I had to keep going, guess what? We have more gas, more gas. We had to get and we more sold wine. out. We sold out. <laughs> like, it was crazy. So it was, it was really good. special to you. For me, it's a little bit reminiscent of, I grew up, my first job was on a horse ranch. I have so many wonderful memories around horses, and now I hear you have a, a wonderful ranch or I farm do. nearby for sale. Super close by, it's called Dove Hollow Equestrian, and a friend of mine created this, and it's like super unique. There's a covered arena, which is super hard to get, as you know, in San Diego County, especially around Rancho Santa Fe and Encinitas. 40 stalls, beautiful like arenas, pastures, like it's the most awesome place. So it just came on the market this past week. So I'd love for somebody that is so passionate about dressage or jumping to acquire that and continue forward with a legacy like that. What kind of property size are we talking about? Um, it's a little over five acres, which is hard to find five acre parcels in, in this particular area. Yeah. And it's so green because it's close to like a little riverbed. So it's it's, it's beautiful. I think you might have maybe the next Olympic athlete moving in and coming up the ranks there. Well, it's interesting because people really do like, there's so many Olympic caliber riders and trainers in this area that so many of the up and coming come from here and make it, so it's awesome. We are gonna start my first item, ladies and gentlemen. This is a surfing adventure. And I'm going to start at 250. Do I hear 250? 300. Do I have 350? 350. I'm looking for 1500. I have 1600. Thank you, madam. 16. I have 2100. 3000. 3000 once. 3000 twice. So. All right. So, Sean, how did we do tonight? 
Okay, so this has been the best event ever on the West Coast. So we're super excited, like unbelievable. Everything's not tallied, but I have to tell you, really, really impressive. And like gonna do really good things by pushing the young riders, the Olympic riders, and it's gonna be awesome. Yes, I would say, you know, we have a lot of Olympic athletes here tonight. This was a gold medal event. It was. It was like a social event of the year, and it was incredible what we did. So thank you. Are you ready to fall in love with a modern farmhouse with ocean views? We are here today in beautiful Encinitas and we're about to check out one of the hottest luxury listings on the market. Our tour guide today is Ryan Dalzell. He is a part of the Dalzell Group, the most creative development company here in North County. And I can't wait to see what they've done with this place. Hey, Cassie. How I are saw you? the door was open, figured I'd Good let myself in. You. Good to yeah, see you. Welcome. Thank you. This is amazing. I know. You like? I love it. I have to say, you've shown us a number of stunning homes over the years, but yeah. this is my personal favorite. Good. Tell us where we are today and who our guest is. Absolutely. Well, we're at uh, probably the most desirable street in Encinitas and certainly the hottest right now, Crest Drive. You've got views out to the mountains, to the ocean. And we have developed these three gorgeous new construction properties. And this one is the last one on the market. Derek was our designer on all of them. And so I thought, hey, what better than to have him here today? And he can talk a little bit about the, the thinking and the, the creation behind yeah, it. Yeah, Derek, I mean, this is gorgeous. How long does it take to design something like this? What's the process like? Well, every project's different. I mean, when you're starting with a, a clean slate and it's just a new lot, you have a lot of flexibility. So really it's understanding your client and what they're looking for. In this case, it was the Dalzell Group and understanding what they're looking to give to this community, something special. So we started with uh, understanding the views. As, as Ryan mentioned, we have views out to the mountains in the morning. Upstairs, we have views out to the ocean to the west Beautiful. and uh, really just tons of room to play with in the backyard. So that was a key focus today. Yeah, no, it's, it's beautiful. Walk me through the layout just a little bit, if you will. This is mostly sure. mostly single. It is, level. and that's what's really appealing. It, it can live very much like a single level. You have the master down. The master's got these gorgeous vaulted ceilings, great natural light, and then you've got an additional two bedrooms down. So if people have kids, young kids, they're close. They, they're on the same level. If they've got older kids, then upstairs there are two more bedrooms and a really killer uh, loft that could be a game room, media room, workout room, whatever, with a deck that you get the ocean views. This is technically a modern farmhouse, but you also have the coastal feel and the, the ocean views. Yeah. I guess the question is what makes this farmhouse, but what makes this coastal? <laughs> Well, I think the farmhouse aspect is answered just by looking at it. I mean, you see a lot of roof lines, elevations, and materials that are just classic to that. Modern, I mean, we have large openings that you could have never done sure. in the original farmhouse era. I mean, today here, especially by the coast, leading to that coastal element is just large scale openings. You can't really do that in rural areas where you might have a farm, so. You yeah. don't really feel like horses are about to walk through here. No. It's not that no. farmy. One thing I was thinking was this house has everything I could ever want, except maybe a barbecue or a hot tub. So <laughs> where would we put that? We have plenty of room for it. <laughs> right off the kitchen here with a pass-through is plenty of space for the homeowner mm -hmm. uh, to come in and put their own fingerprint on the lot. Mm -hmm and just do something that helps with their entertainment style. One thing that people are doing more and more of are ADUs, these accessory dwelling sure. units. Talk to me, Ryan, about how that process works and how you would do that on you know, a lot like this. It's a huge uh, benefit right now. Encinitas especially is trying to help promote affordable options. So not just for somebody that may want to rent out a guest house, but uh, for a homeowner that has a yard like this, a space on the lot, sure. whether it's for in-laws or guests, they can have their own detached living on the same lot, and the city's made it very easy to get permitting done on that. Mm -hmm. So it's a huge benefit. Is this something people are doing a lot now, Derek? 100%, especially in Encinitas, they just waive the development fees for these uh, ADUs. I tell you what, let me show you one of the other outdoor spaces that I love here. One of the really cool features is this covered outdoor living area. 
Uh, you've got the, the fireplace out here, and, and this was really one of Derek's concepts on how to, how to design it. We have the indoor fireplace vibe, but how nice being in California, we get this outdoor fireplace as well. How do you come about figuring out where you're gonna position everything? Yeah, well, this one was a little bit specific. Uh, inside, you have a fireplace on the exterior wall, so you're looking out into the great yard, uh, and you, you're capturing everything that's outside. When you're out here, you're pretty exposed. You wanna feel a little more uh, uh, intimate with the space, so you're facing the home, you're looking into the home as opposed to looking out into the open. You are so good with design choices, and we have a project for you, though, don't we? Tell them, tell them what the project is, the we challenge. Do, we do, I actually just had a, uh, a new listing on the same street, and the homeowner knew that we did design and development as part of what we do. And so he said, you guys are the perfect ones to list my home because it's a big one acre lot with a ton of room to do some future development. So we're gonna take Derek over there and get his ideas on, on what a buyer could do. Are you up for this challenge? 100%, I love puzzles. Perfect, let's head out this door. All right. <laughs> So here we are, and Ryan, you weren't joking when you said this place has so much potential. It must be such an asset for buyers to have an agent like yourself with access to a designer with the skills that Derek has. Yeah, I think that was a key thing. The seller of this property knew that we knew development and that we could speak the language. And so this is an amazing property. It's still on Crest Drive. You've got a one acre parcel with ocean views. Even on a cloudy day like today, you can still see it. Uh, and yet it has so much potential to just take it to another level. What are some of your thoughts having walked through it with us? Yeah, it really does have potential. I mean, some of the original intention is here. You can see when you come through the door, they're really trying to just slowly give you the view, mm -hmm. maybe a little slower than we want. So we can always <laughs> clean things up, open up some sight lines, which were not necessarily thought about the first time and really save the, you know, the canvas. You could see when you walked in that front door, the entryway was a little bit outdated. It could use a little bit more work. Absolutely. The sight line from the front was obscured, so we, we found a way to shift the entry so you can get a nice view of the ocean from the start. It's all about it, these views. It is all about the views and it's all about the lot. And there's just so much opportunity here to add value to this property. We talked about ADUs. Uh, you could do an ADU here. You could have a sport court, a pool, horses. I'm mean, literally, the, the op opportunities are endless. Well, thank you both so much for meeting us here in Encinitas today and just showing us what you can do with your creative, inspiring ideas and you knowing what properties have this development potential. Yeah, thank you.